Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. This is going to be a little bit different. My usual process is to come up with an idea that's uh, either different or a variation on a theme for a uh, filter style, uh, put together a filter for it, and give you the pros and cons and the, the choices I made and, and that sort of stuff. And in the end, I get a filter, and sometimes it's a filter I haven't tried before, so I just test it out. In this particular case, you guys are going to be making all the choices. I'm going to, at the end of each of these videos, it's going to be a series, I am going to give you a choice between two ways of going. And I'm going to also give you the pros and cons for that. Uh, but then what's going to happen is you guys are going to watch the video, you're going to make your choice, and then I'm going to tally the votes. And for the next video, I'll incorporate that idea into the filter, and then uh, we'll proceed. <laughs> I'll give you at the end of that video... This one's going to be a little long because I have to introduce a bunch of stuff, but the rest are going to be quite short. I'll just do the build. I will give you choices at the end. And over time, I'm not sure how long this is going to take because I haven't decided how many uh, decisions there are going to be yet, but there should be at least a few, so this should go on for uh, you know probably like a week anyway. And in the end, we're going to end up with a filter. And this filter is going to be... Uh, I'm going to stick it on an aquarium, we're going to try it out, and I'm going to test it out, and see how each of those choices worked out. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm sanding this right now. I want it to actually look nice too. Normally I don't bother doing this for stuff in my fish room, uh, but in this particular case, uh, when we're done, I want it to actually look kind of nice. So that's that's the main reason for doing this video series. But also, I mean, a lot of people ask me um, what, what do I think about when I make filters, what filters are better than other filters, uh, why I choose certain sizes, and all sorts of things along those lines. So as I said earlier, I, and when I give you a choice, like uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a choice between two things. And that choice is also going to have reasons or consequences, however you want to look at it, for uh, going that route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the two choices, and then I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each choice, and then again, as we progress, uh, hopefully by the end of it, uh, you guys will have a better idea of the thought processes involved in uh, making a filter. So this is just a light sanding I did on the edges, just so it looks a little nicer than the, you know, the rough cut from the saw. Uh, it's not polished. I don't. Uh, I don't go to that extent because unless you're holding a camera right up to it like that, uh, you really can't tell. So here I'm going to put the box together. Uh, it's the uh, same as I've done many times before. Uh, so uh, really not going to uh, go into too much detail of the gluing together. It's uh, I think it's very straightforward. The only difference I want to point out is I am going to leave all of the film on it. Like, well, not uh, obviously not on the inside, but the reason for leaving it uh, covered is depending on the choices you guys make later on, I may have to do work on this actual box itself, and if the protective film's on it, it'll keep it from getting scratched. And the other thing is, you can see how long I'm taking here to set up. When you're building something that has to hold water, I mean, I'm deciding. Uh, well, I want to build a hob. It may turn out not, not to be a hob by the end of this, but uh, I suspect it will be. Uh, it has to be able to hold water. So in case this is going to hang on the back of an aquarium, which I suspect it will, uh, it, it has to be waterproof, and it takes a little bit longer. I don't want any little gaps, uh, so it takes. I have to let each one set up a lot more solidly before moving on. And that's the reason why I'm taking a little extra time on this. So, my initial intent for this filter, as I've already said, is to build a hob. But I want to do a hob that is going to be run by a pump, not air-driven. Uh, the reason for that is, I've, uh, you can see just on the right there, near the top of the screen, is a small water pump. I found one that I think is actually pretty good. I've gotten uh, three of them so far, and I've hooked them up for clients, I've hooked them up for my fish room, and I've been running them, and I haven't had any issues with it so far. So, uh, knock on wood, I think I might have found a good one. 
Uh, in time, I'll let you know what it is if uh, it continues to do what it's supposed to do, and uh, that'd be great because uh, there are times when I actually do need a water pump instead of air driven. The main one I can comes to mind right now that I just probably couldn't actually. I can't, this is uh, take the probably out of that. There's just no way I can make a diatom filter work with air. It, it's just you need the pressure. It has to hold the water flow has to hold the diatom powder against the membrane, or it just doesn't work. And then there are other situations where uh, an impeller driven pump is simply the best solution for it as long as. It lasts. I mean, there's no point in hooking up a cool looking filter system with a waterfall or whatever it is, and then six months later the thing breaks and you have to put a new one on. Uh, I mean, I've gone through a lot of water pumps in the last uh, year or two, and it's just getting to the point where it's really irritating. So, anyway, that said, uh, this is going to be a pump driven hub um, at this point, anyway. But there are so many different choices that you can make for making a filter. I made this a little larger than normal, uh, mostly because it has to be able to incorporate uh, all kinds of ideas. So there's all kinds of things that can be done with, uh, well, <laughs> box really. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with it. I mean, you've seen what I've done, uh, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, all the different styles of filters I've made. And I still haven't even finished with all the possibilities. I've just gone through uh, some of the more common ones. There are suspension filters I want to do, uh, there are liquefied filters I want to do, all kinds of stuff that's coming up uh, hopefully in the relatively near future. And some of them require uh, water pumps. There are certain types of filters you just can't run by air. And uh, like a suspension filter or like a liquefied sand filter, that sort of thing, it does really require uh, consistent flow to keep everything suspended and that's another reason for testing this pump out anyway that's not a very long-winded way of saying this is going to be your filter uh, i mean you guys are going to decide all the decisions you guys are going to end up with a filter and it will uh, function and we will see how well it functions that brings us to our first choice is the pump going to be inside this box or outside this box? Now, there are pros and cons to both. If it is outside the box, as in it is, well, most uh, hobs, uh, like if you buy like an AquaClear or something like that, even though the pump is actually attached to the filter, it pulls water out of the aquarium and forces it through the media and then it overflows into the tank. And then you could, in this case, you could also have the pump uh, inside the tank because we're, while well, we're building it, so we can decide how we want it to go. So it can be sitting in the tank, uh, pump water out to the filter, it goes through the media, and then uh, flows back into the tank. Now, the problem with that is, uh, first off, you'll be looking at the pump. It'll be sitting either in the aquarium, which is the easiest way of building that. Or if we want to go to more extreme, we can uh, drill the bottom of this and attach this pump to the bottom of the filter and then go through the same kind of process as for an aqua clear and then we run into a leak issue because these things uh, <laughs> i don't know if this pump is uh, going to last or how well it's going to last and if we put it uh, in a situation where it has to remain watertight uh, then you can end up with water on the floor and that is also the other problem with pumping water into a hob because if the filter media gets me uh, dirty and you're not you know, paying attention, uh, you can overflow the filter. So that's the cons to having it uh, outside the filter. But it does give you a better flow and it also gives you, um, it, it gives you better filtration in a sense that the water has to go through the media. And as long as you uh, allow for possibilities, like, uh, like you can uh, compensate for how you place the media so that overflow is not an issue. Now, if you put it inside the filter, like here, then you have uh, no view, like there's no problem with it uh, um, obstructing anything inside the aquarium. You don't have to look at it. And that has advantages in the sense of you don't have to look at it. The disadvantage is the water gets into the filter through uh, normal siphoning, and that sometimes can be a little slow. 
and you can end up with the pump running uh, if the media gets really dry you can or sorry really dirty you can end up with it running uh, dry and sucking air and making noise it's not going to hopefully damage anything because I've had one of these uh, run dry already and it seemed to be able to uh, withstand that kind of thing Another advantage for having it inside the box is when you're pumping water out, you can have that water shoot across the surface of the aquarium and it will give you uh, more agitation, more turnover, if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. So there you go. Those are your two choices, inside or outside. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below and I will uh, walk, read and answer your comments and on Sunday I will incorporate that into another video and give you two more choices. So hopefully this all works out and we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And I will see you in the next video and bye for now.